All right, welcome to part two of our robot box modeling tutorial. So we're going to pick up where we left off in the last tutorial. Let's go to a side view here. Oops, let's turn on our screencast keys for you viewers at home. And that ought to do that. Okay. So side view is number pad three, of course. I'm going to look at a wireframe and one of the more difficult aspects to tackle on this particular robot, at least from a box modeling standpoint or from the from a standpoint of just modeling from primitives, is going to be this mouth. Uh, because you'll notice that, well, first of all, I'm going to hide the body here and just let's look at this sphere of a head. You'll notice that the back line of this mouth part doesn't really follow any of the topology of this sphere. It's kind of its own line. How do you model that when what you have are the orange lines that we see here? Well, I'll show you how I would do it. Um, as with anything with this with this uh, industry, 3D modeling, Blender software, there's got to be a hundred ways to do this. This is one of them. Um, so I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to do a box selection and just select the bottom of this sphere where it basically lines up with the line of this mouth right here. And then I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Shift D on my keyboard and you can see that loads my cursor with a copy of those vertices that I had selected. I'm going to opt out of positioning them by tapping Escape because I want them to be in the same place but before I do anything to deselect this, I'm going to separate this mouth part so that it's its own mesh object. I'm going to tap P on my keyboard. That brings up my separate menu and I'm going to tell it to separate this selection. And at first glance that doesn't look like it did anything, but if I tab out of edit mode, you can see I can now click down here and select just this new object. Over here in my outliner, you can see that I have sphere, which is the head, and I also have sphere.001. Matter of fact, while we're here, let's take the chance or take the opportunity to name those objects. So I can select the sphere. We'll call this robot.head. Whoop. Missed my A there. Robot.head. Then we'll grab sphere.001. And we will name this robot dot jaw or we could call it robot dot mouth but I think jaw is probably a little better descriptor of what's going on here so now I've got my robot dot jaw selected and I'm going to tab into edit mode on just this part actually let's tab out for a second I'm going to select this head and I'm going to tap H to hide it and get it out of the way now what I'm going to do here um, I don't want to do twice, once for each side, so I'm going to select this uh, jaw and go to a front view, tab into edit mode, and do a box selection, tap B, and I'm going to select half of this on one side of the x-axis and delete these vertices. And from here I'm going to add a mirror modifier and I'm going to check the clipping box so that these vertices in the middle all clip together. I'm going to double check, try to drag them left and I can see they don't move so I know they're attached. That's good. Okay, now I only have to do this once basically. It lessens my chances of messing up here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. What I'm going to do, um, I want the curvature I mean, this is a perfectly spherical cur curvature within its the limits of its own resolution here. Um, and I want to preserve that. Whatever happens, I want basically these lines to be exactly as they are because they match uh, the head. So if I go into my side view, I can select a vertex and I can move it perfectly along the edges that it inhabits by tapping shift V. 
you can see I can move it perfectly this way or I can move it this way or this way but where the only options that I have are to move it perfectly along the edges that it touches so let's hit escape I'm gonna do this from a side view and I'm gonna tap shift V and I'm just gonna bring this vertex in here and maybe you'll start to see kinda of what I'm doing here I'm gonna do the same thing down here shift V and I'm gonna start bringing these vertices in shift V and what they'll be doing is they're coming around and they are inhabiting basically the same points in space that the edge that used to be here would have inhabited so that's they're still pre they're preserving that curvature for me okay now the uh, this back line of the jaw here it terminates right here and I don't have any vertices to describe that point so I need to do a loop cut let's hit control R loop cut and slide and we'll just bring a vertex right down there and that also informs me as to what other vertices need to move where because I can see I've got a vertex there and uh, so the vertices that match that point need to come up above it and they are not going to form part of the outermost edge because the vertex that they attach to below doesn't and you'll see what I mean here in just a second so last vertex in line here whoop, shift V and just bring that all the way over and this is going to be the back edge of the jaw shift V and there's a little bit of curvature to this back line that's drawn in here so that works now this is the shape that I have come up with here you can see that I now have this kind of dish back here which is the logical consequence of basically creating this shape along the edge of the uh, of the sphere and this dish portion if I tab into edit mode it needs to be deleted it doesn't actually belong as part of my model anymore so that's the shape we've come up with it's infinitely thin which is not really realistic so what we have here is going to form the inside portion of the jaw part that actually sits flush with the sphere so now we tab into edit mode we select all I'm going to tap E to extrude and then S to scale this whole thing out and just give it a little bit of width then I'm going to go into my wireframe mode and I'm going to move this whole thing in the Z axis and in the Y axis and just kind of line everything up there just to kind of give it some width I think I've scaled that a little too much let's make it a little thinner because it doesn't look all that thick in the drawing little larger bring it back I don't want to give this guy a too big of an underbite although he kind of probably needs one okay so there's the part that we have now that's our robot dot jaw part and now if I hit option H or alt H if you're on a PC you can see that I've got these parts Placed here now. Let's go ahead and smooth shade them just so we can get a little bit of a more uniform look with our the body and the legs which are smooth shaded. Now there needs to be kind of a kind of a pin hinge part here as well. Um, I think for that I'm probably just going to put a cylinder all the way through so shift A gets me my uh, add menu and I'm going to click on cylinder here come down here and of course we don't want an n-gon 
on the cap fill. I don't know why that's the default value in Blender. That's a little strange to me because end guns are a, are a no-no. We'll click on align to view and let's take our radius down so this thing looks a little more like the part we need instead of the part we deserve. And it doesn't need to be a 32 vertex part, so I'm going to reduce it to 16. Just kind of bring it over here and eyeball it into place. Scale it down. And let's see what that looks like from our front view. Looks like we need to scale it in X just a little. Okay. Let's scale it in X a little more. We don't want this thing looking like Frankenstein's monster. Okay, that's probably good for now. That's a decent placeholder anyway. Let's smooth shade that. And our robot kind of needs arms, right? We've neglected those probably long enough. So let's uh, create a cube. I'm just going to do cube modeling here again. Kind of move that thing into place. I'm going to go from a front view and I'm going to add a mirror modifier. Tab into edit mode and move these vertices out from the middle and then turn on clipping so that they, the arms aren't clipped together. And I'm going to come over here and just kind of, at this point, you probably know this drill. We're going to rotate, scale. I'm going to scale in, hit Shift X there. So I'm scaling in every axis except X. And I might, I think I might do this with vertices, actually. Let's just kind of get this thing into place. Extrude. Scale, Shift X. Just kind of make the shape here. Extrude, Scale, Shift X. Extrude, Scale, Shift X. Okay, let's see what that looks like compared to the front dimensions. And that looks okay so far. It looks to me like these probably need to have a little bit of an outward tilt. Um, kind of like this. But I'm going to create the entire arm before I do that because that tilt could complicate putting the pieces together a little bit. So. Um, probably just need to make another clevis, kind of like we did. Scale in X. Matter of fact, you know what I really think I ought to do? I'm doing a little bit of wheel reinventing here. I'm going to tab out of edit mode and I'm going to delete these arms. And I'm going to select the legs. We'll see if this works here. And I'm going to duplicate the legs. Bring them up. Kind of rotate them into place a little bit. And I'm going to start scaling these things down. And I'm going to see if I can just turn the legs into the arms. Because I'm feeling lazy about this. And I think, why not? Grab an egg. Whoop. Let's tab into edit mode, select all, and grab an X. Now, the uh, legs are obviously rotated in a, in a different way. The, you know, the knee bends differently than the elbow here. So let's control L select everything that's linked to this axis down here and then I'm going to place my 
3D cursor right smack in the middle of this joint. Come down here, and I'm going to change my pivot point to the 3D cursor so that when I rotate this stuff, it rotates around that edge. You can see I've got a lot of reshaping to do, but I still think it's going to be less work than reinventing this entire thing from scratch. So now I just come in here and I start selecting these vertices. And I'm basically just going to try to make this thing be shaped like the arm. And you know what? I've done a little bit of a dumb thing here. I didn't uh, didn't really get this to conform to the shape of the arm in the first place. So um, the upper arm, I mean, I didn't uh, I didn't get that shaped right, and I didn't quite realize it. So I'll show you another quick trick here. I'm just going to kind of select roughly the area around this clevis and hinge. Just kind of get, get that selected and then um, I'm going to come down here to this little button and I'm going to turn a proportional editing on. I'm going to change it to connected. And because I have everything selected here, this is all going to move together. Basically I can now tap G and I've got this circle that I can scroll to increase or decrease the size of the circle and I can kind of place everything you can see that everything else within the circle there's a proportional fall off of influence from my selection on outward so that I can get that all kind of working together and then um, I don't have to worry about um, moving all the individual pieces to keep them together. So I'm going to disable proportional editing now and go back to kind of getting this shape to conform to the drawing. I don't really want proportional editing on for this part because it could actually really mess me up here. I think I've got the right stuff grabbed. I guess we'll find out later, huh? Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Oops, don't need that vertex selected. Yeah, it looks to me like the inside lower edge of this clevis probably needs to come up to get out of the way of that arm a little bit to make that work properly. Let's rotate that. And there, that's a little better. I'm going to change my pivot point back to median point so that when I rotate things it's not quite so weird. Okay, and we are getting close here. Actually, I'm thinking for a decision made on a 
in the middle of a recording a video this one is actually turning out pretty well and you know what I really don't think I need this many vertices to describe what's going on here so I'm gonna delete the ah missed I'm going to delete those vertices there and I'll close that off manually in a minute let's close that off right now since the subsurf modifier won't work properly until we do so I'm gonna just grab the vertices that sit across from each other and tap F and subdivide that twice so that then we have oh and you know what I misread that let's see actually let's go with edges here one two three four one two three four and I really hope I'm closing this off correctly sometimes it's a little hard to read uh, when your subdivision surface modifier is on but that looks probably not quite what I should have done actually let's see can I do a loop cut there I can actually so we're probably okay so I'm gonna leave it and Let's just kind of grab these vertices here and scale them in X. Kind of bring this whole thing in so that our uh, arm isn't clipping through itself. Scale in X. There we go. Okay. Basically, we're going to do the same thing with the wrist here. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a simpler approach to this wrist than actually punching a hole like we did here. Um, you know, this is turning into a really long tutorial, and you've seen the concepts. So just in the interest of being fast and maybe in the interest of being a little bit lazy, I'm going to kind of phone this one in. So I'm going to just select this hinge up here, Shift D, copy it and bring it down, scale, and we'll add a mirror modifier to that tab into edit mode grab in X scale it in X and I wonder if anybody's spotted what's wrong with my mirror modifier why it's not working scale it in X the reason it's not working is that this cylinder, at least I believe it's not working because it's rotated. So if you look up here, you can tell the rotation is set to X 90 degrees and Z 90 degrees. And so an X axis mirror is actually mirroring probably this way or this way. And that's not really working so control a will allow me to apply my rotations and then suddenly the other side of the mirror appears over here and we're laughing okay so now I can tab into edit mode here cut my new clevis for the hand the wrist I'm just going to cut it there. 
delete those faces. And one, two, three, uh oh, triangle. Well, that's no good. Control R, I'll make a cut right there. There we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So there's our clevis. We can sharpen up the edges of that with a couple loop cut and slide operations within our uh, mesh here. I can see that that little spot right there probably needs a little revisiting. bit of weirdness here and I think it's because of the topology that I made when I reclosed these faces I think I probably didn't do it quite right but hey I'm making this up as I go all right so there's our forearms. And now basically the hands will be pretty simple. Let's name this uh, name this cylinder object here. We'll call this wrist. Well, let's be consistent. Robot dot wrist dot hinge. And we can name our robot.jaw.hinge and let's insert a cube here scale this down we're gonna make the hand out of this cube I'll add a mirror modifier Tab into edit mode, G, X, we'll move it in the X axis, and we'll get started here. So let's scale this in X, let's put it inside of our clevis. And start, what I'm hoping is now starting to feel like a familiar process and a familiar operation to you. Okay, now the fingers, how many fingers are there on this thing? I don't know, from the front view, I'm just seeing spheres here. From the side view, it looks like there's at least two. So if we want to make fingers, that's fine. We can actually, matter of fact, let's, uh, let's broaden this out as it leaves, after it leaves the hand, or leaves the wrist. I'm going to subdivide this thing here and come underneath and we can just start extruding our fingers.
scale and not X, shift X. I kind of want them to be about as wide as the hand. Extrude, rotate. Scale in not X, shift X. Scale, shift X. Just kind of making sure that I have roughly the shape here. I don't think I'm going to be able to follow the drawing extremely close here because it kind of has a bit of perspective that I don't have two frames of reference for. So let's scale that down there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's take this whole side. We're going to put another finger in here. And just to keep them from bumping into each other, let's take this whole side and move it in in X just a little. There we go. Okay, and the other thing we can do now is we can actually just kind of select this whole finger. You don't really need to do that whole operation again. Our other finger is going to be nearly identical. So let's duplicate that. And then I'm going to scale it in the x-axis by negative 1 to flip it around. And you can see kind of what that did here. So I just kind of need to get this roughly into position. And then I'm actually going to delete four of these faces. And then delete this face here. And now I've got two edge loops that I can join. So option click here, option click here. And control E to get my edge menu. Let's click bridge edge loops. And now that finger is attached. That's the thing. Um, always watch out for situations where you've already made something. Because if you have, there's usually no good reason to, to repeat your work to do it all over again. Okay, robots kind of start and come together. And let's have a look and see what we're missing. Haven't made any toes. Yeah, let's go ahead and make some toes. And give it some nice character. So I think, again, I'm just going to box model the toes. So Shift A, let's create a cube. And we can reduce its size. Oop. And bring it down here. Oop. Let's just move it in Z. I'm not going to move it off the X axis yet. Why? You probably guessed it, because I'm going to mirror this. So now tab into edit mode move this over and we can start to model these toes they're pretty simple really so these toes kinda come down below the level of the pad of the foot in perspective which that's a good way to show perspective in a drawing but in terms of what we are doing here that won't work so I'm going to bring the toes to the level of the foot and leave them level with the foot um, basically what I need to do here let's get a side view on this thing Oop. move this kind of back into the foot here see what that looks like okay that's probably pretty decent now let's do a loop cut because these toes kind of have a point to them so we'll tap GY and just kind of get that whole thing going on there okay now again now that I've made one toe I probably don't need to make uh, individual each I probably don't need to make each toe individually and these toes have a little bit of a curvature to them I guess so before I really uh, duplicate this I'm gonna get it right here so let's scale this in X and just kind of add a little bit of curvature to this toe 
Do they curve from the side? Yeah, it looks like they should. So let's move that in the Y axis and just kind of let that all curve out a little bit. Okay, so that's probably a pretty decent toe. We can smooth shade that and apply a subdivision surface modifier. And if we really want them to come to a point, we can kind of reassert what we're trying to do with some loop cuts there. Let's move our edit cage to conform to the to show us what the modifier is doing. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good toe. Okay, so now I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm just going to leave all my toes as one object and duplicate that in X. Let's uh, go to a top view and kind of scale that down a little. It looks to me like the outer toes are a little bit smaller than the inner toes. Now by scaling, I will have lifted that off the floor just a touch. So let's move it back down, put it on the floor with the other toe. That looks pretty good. And then do the same thing the other direction. Don't need to scale it down this time because we're just using the other toe and this time I also don't, since I'm not scaling, I don't need to make it hit the floor. Okay, so there's our robot and I'm going to say it's actually a pretty decent design. Are we missing any major design features? Oh, it's got ears, hasn't it? Okay, well, let's make some ears. So, box modeling. Let's create a box. Here's a cube. Bring it up here and... Add a mirror modifier. Tab in edit mode, grab in X. Okay, and we've got a pretty specific shape for these ears here. So let's see what we can do, how close we can get there. back in the y-axis. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like in 3D. Okay, doing all right. Once again, now that we're actually in 3D, we can kind of see that this object isn't quite meshing with the head the way it looks like it's supposed to in the drawing. Um, so I am going to probably modify these just a little bit. I'm going to move this in the y-axis. And, okay, doing that, it never actually meets the head. Let's see. So that kind of comes close to burying in right there. Move it in Z, move it in Y, G, Y. You know what actually I might do? I think I'm going to 
just grab these faces actually and make an extrusion and just kind of bring them into the face a little bit like that. GX or into the head. There we go. Okay. That way they kind of join a little bit better. We'll smooth those out and add a subdivision surface modifier. Then we'll look at it again, apply our edit cage and kind of reconform here. Additional loop cut here to kind of get everything out. Nice sharp edges, the way it looks like it was designed to have. Like it looks like it was designed to have. Okay, and there's kind of our robot. So we've basically we've got the shapes put together and. Now it looks like we've got to fix the normals on our hands. Tab into edit mode, go to shading slash UVs and recalculate the normals. That'll fix those. Okay. So that's pretty decent so far. And basically what we have left to do here is just apply some materials. And that gets pretty easy on something like this because it's made of so many different parts. Um, so, you know, you can literally just select the head, create a new material, and say, you know what, this is going to be robot.green, and I might pick a diffuse color of a nice kind of, let's go sort of an aquamarine green, like that's kind of nice. Let's look at this thing in a rendered viewport. Uh, I'm going to select my lamp and I'm going to turn it up to about 900 just so I can kind of see what I'm doing a little better here. And then I'm going to split out my view and go into my node editor. And let's give this thing a little bit of character. I kind of picture this as sort of being a really metallic, nice polished metallic, newish sort of robot. So I think I'm actually, oh, sorry, I still have my lamp selected. Select the robot head again. And I think actually I'm going to disconnect this diffuse shader and I'm going to add a principled shader it's really easy to create a metal, something metallic with a principled shader. So my base color, I can just click the little eyedropper here and sample that from the diffuse shader that I had already been using before. And you can see I've got this metallic slider. What that basically does is that makes it so that uh, reflections in this material are tinted by the material itself, which is a characteristic of metal. So I can turn that metallic slider up and you can see that this reflection, which was just kind of, it's really dim here. Let's, uh, let's turn our roughness down so you can see that a little better. That reflection is just showing white, which is the color of the light. And if I turn it to metallic, it starts to tint it green and kind of take on that green halo there. And that's sort of nice. So let's let's go with that. I think that's probably a good look for it. Okay, the ears should probably be a different color. So let's uh, let's start with our robot.green. I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And let's duplicate this. Now it's called. I hit the little plus sign here, and it's called robot.green.001. So let's rename this to robot.blue. And I think I will make the ears kind of a bluish. Let's make them kind of a light blue. That's nice. There we go. And 
the jaw, of course, can be its own color. So let's select one of our previous materials and duplicate it again. And we'll call this robot.darkgreen. Actually, you know what? I'll finish renaming there, but I think I'm going to remove that slot and just select robot.blue again. I like, I like how cohesive that is. I might color the eyes robot.blue as well, just to kind of put things together. Maybe we'll change the color scheme up just a little bit when we get into the body. So let's choose robot.darkgreen for this, and you can see I haven't actually modified that yet. So let's let's choose a little bit of a darker green. Mm, yeah, that's starting to look too army. Let's go yellow. Ooh, we could go gold. That might be nice. Sort of a, oh, that's not warm enough for gold. Sort of a gold colored robot. That's nice. You can see the robot reflecting himself. That's kind of a nice look there. And I think for the arms, let's, uh, let's see what they look in our robot.blue. I like that. Hands. Let's go robot.green. Colors are a bit like typefaces. You don't want to go nuts. Uh, dark green. Let's rename this. It's called robot.darkgreen still. Let's call it robot.gold. Let's turn all of our hinges to that gold color because none of them actually touch it. Okay, so here's the legs. You can see our legs can be the blue. And our toes should probably be, should they be green or gold? Uh, if they're gold, it looks too much like he's wearing Elvis shoes. So let's go green. That's better. And that actually looks pretty good. Now you'll notice the shading on the head is a little bit weird here. And that's because um, this is smooth shaded but it's actually it is faceted here it's a fairly low resolution sphere all I have to do to really fix that is just add a subdivision surface modifier and let it subdivide a couple times and that fixes the problem for us now I could do a lot of things to sort of improve this robot um, one thing I should do is add a mesh for a ground plane because that when you can start casting shadows and actually having something to reflect you can see how much more lively and realistic that is like it's reflecting its own shadow now and that just looks so much better than it did putting a ground plane in there um, also right now my world has a color of dark gray I might want to change that I can put it black so that it's not reflecting any light or I can say you know what let's give you kind of a bluish environment here just you know perfectly white might be kind of fun that starts to overwhelm the senses a little bit our uh, our lamp is up pretty high we can turn that down And I'm going to say, let's go darker gray with the world, too, because that's just a little too cotton candy. Anyway, you can change that, and uh, that allows for some contrast there. Um, so that's starting to look pretty decent. Another thing I might do is I might add some spheres into the eyes. Actually, let's do that really quick before we finish up this tutorial, just because this robot really kind of deserves something a little more sophisticated than what it has. So Shift A, whoop, Shift A, let's add UV sphere. Let's close this window down a little bit and you can see it's huge scale it way way down grab in the z-axis and of course we need two of them so we're just going to mirror it before we move it off of X mirror and grab in X 
seven Z. I'm going to say that looks like about the right size. Grabbing Y and just kind of let these protrude out of the front of the lenses like that. Kind of like car headlights a little. So let's smooth shade those and then add a glass material. And we can just you know we can just use the generic glass material that's available here uh, by default in Blender. Let's see how that looks if we add that new robot dot glass and instead of a diffuse shader we'll just choose a glass shader and you know I think we should tint that glass a little bit we've so far avoided any shades any hints of red but let's you know let's go kinda kind of a nice warm vibrant red yeah that's sort of nice okay and uh, I'm gonna call that our robot thanks for listening